Welcome to the HJ Talks About Abuse podcast, the podcast where we talk about sexual abuse cases in the hope that it will assist listeners in openly discussing topics which have been ignored for too long. This podcast is brought to you by the abuse team at Hugh James. We are lawyers, so we tend to speak about the legal aspects of abuse cases, but we aren't too shy to speak up about the broader issues faced by survivors of sexual abuse too. We hope that you find it interesting, but more than that, if you are a survivor of sexual abuse, we hope that you find our discussion empowering. Hello, podcast listeners. My name is Alan Collins. I'm the partner and head of the abuse team at Hugh James, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Danny Vincent. Hi, Danny. Hi, Alan. And listeners, we're in for an interesting conversation about Love Island. Now, I'm sure most of you are avid followers of Love Island. So we thought, well, let's have a topical podcast. This <laughs> is Danny's suggestion, was it not, Danny? It uh, was indeed. Yeah, because you want to talk in this podcast about, quote unquote, inappropriate massages. Yeah, that's correct. So the reason that this is going to be um, the feature of our podcast today is a former Love Island star, Miss Phillips, she has come forward on her social media platforms to discuss incidents where, or at least one incident where she was having a massage and felt that, that it was inappropriate. And so she's come forward to her followers and, and her fans to explain what's happened to her, I guess, to raise awareness to other women, men or anyone. To emphasise that this is an allegation. Yeah. Yeah, this is an allegation and she's alleging that she was having this massage with her masseur or masseuse, whoever she had massages from for. And on this occasion, she is saying that the massage was inappropriate. The idea being that she had some cellulite, but in a particular part of her body on a, in a particular part of her anatomy that needed to be massaged. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And she agreed to that, but. She is saying or allegedly saying that it all went a bit too far and was a bit somewhat inappropriate. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, don't know about you, Alan, if you have any massages. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had many massages over the years. And I think it is a bit of an uncomfortable situation. You know, you, you're removing your clothing, you're sat in a room with somebody else on, on your own and you trust, as with many professions, you're going to a professional to have a service you know you're in very little clothing and it's a difficult one because you need to feel comfortable but again it is that thing that you are putting your trust in someone to do a service professionally now obviously in this situation she comments that her her underwear was removed like her bottom half underwear was removed and she felt that that was inappropriate for, for what was happening now, I think the reason that I wanted to discuss this in the podcast, especially with some of our listeners, is that I think sometimes in our job, we have people that come forward that things happen to them and they don't speak up because they are putting their trust in that professional. And that's exactly that what, what she said is that she felt uncomfortable in the situation, but didn't raise it because she had trust in someone. It's difficult because, as you know, you've got questions of consent haven't you? You know, what is being consented to? What hasn't been consented to? You know, was there informed consent? And you easily can see how grey areas emerge and what takes place falls into that grey area, if not beyond. Yeah, it's it's an incredibly difficult one. Clearly, as we've discussed, you wouldn't have massages. I do. You're on a table, you're, you're in your underwear, and you know, how low that massage touches you, it, it, it's a difficult one you you're consenting for a service you know you're consenting to have the knots taken out of your back or in this case you know she was having a specific treatment to deal with a part of her body that she she was unhappy with but the reason that I thought that we would discuss it is because we've had things like this in the press before where it, whether it be a physio or a masseur or something like that where the person has felt that the, the treatment has been inappropriate, that it touched too high or towards the groin area or, or the breast or, or whatever, and that the person feels like they can't come forward and can't say this is inappropriate because it's in a setting between two people, you know, in a professional place, whether that be in a hotel or a specific sports massage location, shop, 
whatever it may be. And I just felt that we should have a chat about it so that our listeners, if, you know, if you think that something's happened, whether it be a sports massage or in a house club or, you know, people have therapy all the time after car crashes or whatever it may be, that they have to feel comfortable in the treatment that they've had. And if they're not, they, they need to raise a complaint. That's right, because if it isn't consensual, then an assault has been committed. And in civil law, that's a tort, T-O-R-T, which can give rise to a claim for damages. And of course, we've seen this business of massages and inappropriate massages, massages appearing in the football coach cases where lots of youngsters complained that they were subjected to a so-called sports massage, but quite clearly it was not a sports massage, which was what took place, nothing to do with sport at all, where the context was, of course, sport. Sport was just used as an excuse to try and legitimise something that was clearly wrong. You know, illegal crimes were being committed because these youngsters were being touched on parts of their body that didn't need to be touched and had nothing to do with playing football or, or whatever. Yeah, it's again, it's mirroring the, the same things is that, one, it's an individual going in and not knowing quite what the treatment in, entails and, and whether it is appropriate. And especially with those types of cases you've just mentioned, it's only years later that, you know, there's a realisation that actually being touched there or, you know, having to be asked for that piece of clothing to be removed was completely inappropriate. But all of these people will have trusted that that person was a professional, had the qualifications, was in a professional setting, knew what they were doing. And that, you know, we, we do blindly trust authority to an extent, don't we? We're going sure. to a service. Yeah. Well, the lesson or the, you know, or the advice or the, the position of all um, professionals with their physiotherapists, sport therapists, coaches, masseurs, whatever, is that you don't touch anybody anywhere unless you've got their informed permission. So you, the boundaries are, are very clear so that both parties know exactly what's going to happen. Because if you don't set those boundaries, then you run the risk of a complaint. Yeah. And I think as an individual, if you feel incom- uncomfortable in any way, you know, you don't have to blindly think because that person is a professional that, that, that that's OK. You know, if you feel uncomfortable about anything, you know, you, you have to raise that concern. And I don't think anyone yes. should ever be embarrassed for that. That's right. That's right. Exactly. And of course, going in the opposite direction, we've had cases where the person at the receiving end of something going wrong is the person providing the service. So we've had cases, have we not, where we've acted for escorts who provide a sexual service and they have tried to set boundaries with their clients, customers, and things have gone terribly wrong. And they've ended up being victims of serious assaults, sexual assaults themselves. And the so-called client customer has been successfully prosecuted for serious sexual offences and gone to prison. So we've seen those sorts of cases. Again, it all comes down to setting the boundaries and understanding what is being consented to and what isn't. Very, very difficult. And of course, there's been notorious cases involving, sounds sexist saying this, but it has been, you know, we have to stick with the facts, where there's been young women have gone back to hotels with footballers and rugby players and so on and quite often there's been alcohol consumed so um, maybe um, brains are not working as they should be and clearly sexual activity has taken place and the young person has complained rightly or wrongly but she has been sexually assaulted if not raped and of course the you know the case ends up going to court and the jury has a very difficult task of trying to unravel what did the, the parties agree to? What exactly was the deal? And of course, it becomes, from a jury's perspective, very difficult, if not Im- impossible, to unravel who agreed to what and so on. Again, it all comes down to informed consent and setting the boundaries. Yeah, I agree. And I agree with that. And I just, in this specific area that we are talking about now in respect of massages, I know from my personal experience, I've never gone for a massage and the massage has said, can I touch you, you know, on your arm, on your leg? It just seems to be that you pay for a period of time and, and, and that's it. And so I wonder whether this area will be 
become quite murky and clouded in what you are consenting and, and you aren't. But it's an interesting point, isn't it? You know, it's you know, it is what exactly are you stepping into the room for? You know, people aren't mind readers, are they? No, and I mean, you know, as we have this conversation, it's only in respect of you know this headline that's reached the press at the moment and we should say there's obviously a significant number of very professional people and a lot of people mm. enjoy the service and it is just a case of sometimes there are a few people that are pushing the boundaries or, or, or feeling that they can get away with something yeah, yeah. you know you're, you're 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 correct there's a huge element of of trust and of course there's always you know that very human emotive reaction or if something isn't quite right i'm too embarrassed to say anything too shy to say anything maybe i've misinterpreted maybe i've misunderstood people doubt yeah, maybe that was normal maybe that's what what should have happened you know if you're a person that's never had a massage before and you go for one do you know where you should or shouldn't be touched probably not it's only if you you know you're a regular and you go weekly monthly that that you know exactly really and you've had multiple people what what you're you know expecting Oh, yes. Interesting. Yes. Thank well, thanks for raising that, Danny. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in once again. And as always, if you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, then please do not hesitate to contact us and look forward to next week's podcast. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of HJ Talks About Abuse. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcast player. If you'd like to speak to us about something you've heard today, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at aboutabuse at hjtalks.co.uk.